Tell me something. Why is it so hard for you to kill this man? He knew every move of mine before I made it. I'd have him right there to take the shot. I wanna be forever young. And he'd be gone like a ghost. Do you really wanna live forever? Who is he? Hey everybody, welcome Thanks back you. to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Rouse. Today we're discussing Gemini Man 2019, PG-13, an hour and 57 minutes, directed by Ang Lee, directed by David Benioff uh, on the screenplay um, known best for Game of Thrones, Billy Ray and Darren Lemke. Billy Ray is uh, best known for Shattered Glass and The Hunger Games, as well as Captain Phillips and Overlord. Okay, I really like that movie. Uh, Darren Lemke is best known for uh, the kids' movie Turbo, Shazam, from this year, um, Jack the Giant Slayer, and Goosebumps. So he has a lot of family features under his belt, and we all know David Benioff is best adapting uh, Game of Thrones give or take the last season. We all know what to say about that. But anyways, uh, this is directed by Ang Lee. And Ang Lee is best known for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 2000, Life of Pi, director uh, 2012. Um, He also was director of Brokeback Mountain and most recently testing out the new 120 uh, frames per second on the movie Billy Lynn's um, Long Halftime Walk. And many people best know Ang Lee for always trying something new with uh, technical features in his movies. Um, not so much well-recepted in the uh, on the Billy Lynn ha- Long Halftime Walk movie, However, in this movie, there is this twist of de-aging one of the main characters in a way that is not only uh, just de-aging, but it's creating a brand new person. So, this movie stars uh, Will Smith, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Clive Owen, and Benedict Wong. Here's the synopsis. An over-the-hill hitman faces off against a younger clone of himself. So, Gemini Man is going off the new technical features that Ang Lee wanted to bring to the feature screens. He wanted to have a movie completely shot in 120 frames, uh, frames per second, which makes it basically ultra super clear super 4k uh high frame rate um extremely hd and for people that don't really understand that most movies are shot in 24 frames per second which kind of give it this a little bit more dramatic uh appeal to it and don't it does not require nearly as it doesn't boost the light kind of like this movie does in some ways it can make it look like they're standing on a set so a lot of movie makers uh are try to stay away from it um this movie is not going to be shown in that frame rate with the exception of only maybe 14 different uh movie theaters out in the entire country uh of the united states i'm not sure about outside the states but what's the point in shooting this movie in such a high frame rate, in such a 3D, 4K, 120 frames per second way that that none of us as the viewers are going to get to experience anyway? So let's go ahead and start uh, with the pros of this movie. Um, well, 
it is off of a hundred and thirty eight million dollar budget, so that's not exactly a pro for them, but for us as the viewers, that should mean that we should get some pretty high production value. Well, what do we get for a hundred and thirty eight million dollars on this movie? We got <clears throat> uh, you know pretty uh, charismatic will Smith. I mean, he tries to do the best with what he what he's got during this movie. I will say. This is not a great script that they're giving these uh, these actors. They're all A plus actors. I mean, we've seen them all do A plus work. The writing in this is not A plus. However, Will Smith does his best to counterbalance that. Uh, something that is good: uh, cinematography. Uh, the cinematography is not bad. I'll say that you're never bored in a way. Is visually bland. But I will say the the story is, is what kind of is holding it back. So the cinematography is working its ass off. You can see what Ang Lee's vision was trying to be with this script. Apparently the script had been tossed around for years back in uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, a couple of other big names. Uh, it sounded like half the people from the Expendables cast were talked about to be in this original movie, and it ended up being Will Smith's uh, decision to take this. Um, uh, they are trying to have a real showcase for the special effects in this movie. And I'd say about 80% of the time they uh, they work for for this specific film the problem is it's mostly low lighting that we're uh, they're doing the best uh, work in but there's occasional times that you see cg or characters that uh, have had work done to their face that are just completely abominable you got you got to get it out of there it's just it's it's unacceptable um Let's see what else we have. There's really only about one action scene that works for me personally, and it's this middle kind of motorcycle sequence. And I'll say that they do a great job with the execution. The problem is the the technical work and the stuntmen do not look uh, anything like uh, the characters. I mean, if it looks this bad and quote-unquote rubbery is what I would have called uh, some of the, uh, the CGI work. It just looked like they didn't have bones in some sequences, and, and it just didn't look uh, didn't look that great for especially this high of a budget. Um, a couple of the cons. Honestly, you could hear throughout the pros of what I was saying of this movie that, uh, you know, there's cons written all over this this movie i mean it's riddled with problems first of all like i said the writing it is atrocious not only is it atrocious it's it's uh it's boring as well let me give you a couple of the quotes that they said uh i think this is a uh, mary elizabeth winstead to uh will smith's character uh why are you retiring will smith says i find it hard to look in the mirrors lately and it's not really a through line that he says that. It's just something he says at the beginning and then something he says at the end. <laughs> it's just uh, uh, just a stupid-ass line among many others. Another one is, uh, it's not gun time, it's coffee time. I mean, who wrote this? And, and what do you... It's almost like they're trying to be bad, but with these terrible you know one-liners but it's just like lands flat so um i won't say that they wasted mary elizabeth winstead but they just didn't know what to do with the character um she has a handful of action scenes uh, maybe not terribly that many but uh the ones that she's in i'd say are pretty competently shot like i think Generally, the action is okay to pretty good, somewhere in in between that middle. And um, her character as Danny Zakowarski was um, pretty badass. If they would have known what to do with it, they kind of whittle between her being um, a romantic subplot 
and uh, sub character or, or you know uh, supporting character, but also her being her own independent self, and they just really don't know what to do with the character. It's it's it drives me crazy. Um, that kind of leads into the odd humor. They really just it, the main core is Will Smith alongside uh, Winstead and then Benedict Wong um, as Baron. And honestly, there's a good chunk of this movie. It's it's just them, and all three of them just don't really have all that much. Uh, um, not they don't have a vibe off of each other, if that makes sense. You know, they're not bouncing off each other. They're kind of like if you think like uh, Will Smith and uh, Martin Lawrence and Bad Boys, they had this kind of uh, conversational humor that really worked. There is none of that in this movie. It is completely sucked of sucked dry of all humor. And we're getting one of these serious performances from Will Smith that he kind of has to be not upset Will Smith, but he's just dramatic Will Smith, and he's not the... the the fun hanging out Will Smith there's you, there's about three or four Will Smiths you're gonna get and it's kind of one of those um but yeah let me get into I will say probably another problem of this movie is the uh fact that it's PG-13 I think the PG-13 uh tagline on it kind of keeps it in this safe zone where they just don't want to take risks this doesn't want to say anything politically they don't want to say anything uh from uh, much more than saying that it's uh kind of a visual feature you know this is look what we can do we can de-age a 50 year old man to make him look like he's 20 something um so let me see the let me say anything else that we have on here. Clive Owen is just a one note character. Honestly, doesn't even need to be. There's there's a lot there's there's a lot of problems with this movie. I, I I have a lot of notes written down for it, and it's just kind of boggling my head that I even went through this much uh, trouble with it. It's it's a really relatively simple concept with this retiring. Um, you know, retiring double agent, or just, sorry, just uh, this retiring agent that is uh, trying to go on, you know, the one last kill and ends up, the corporation is coming after him. And guess what? Who the corporation is sending? Uh, the Gemini Man, I guess. It's a uh, fucking young Will Smith, the clone of Will Smith. And the weirdest thing about it is... Um, they kind of position this movie as if we, as the viewer, don't know what's what's already going to happen. As if we, as if we haven't seen four or five trailers for Gemini Man, the, the you know, a person made from another person. Like we we, if we're shown that he has a clone in the trailer, then what's the point in hiding the clone in the movie for forty five minutes? So we really don't get a full exposure of the clone for quite a long time. I, and I don't think that's a spoiler, honestly, because it's all in the trailer. So there's a large chunk of time we're just kind of dicking around and figuring out, you know, is that a clone coming after him? And then if it is, what does that mean? And so there's kind of no character development regarding the new clone, the young Will Smith is junior. Um, which is a stupid and terrible name. They couldn't come up with anything better than that, which is ridiculous. And among other things, they they say they clone. Well, you know, they the whole thing is why did they clone? You know, Will Smith, and the reasoning for it is so ridiculous and stupid that. It, it, I can't even believe it's been, it, it's relayed this many times to, to all these people. So, um, sorry, it's breaking my brain right now. <laughs> um, 
So there's a couple of tonal and atmospheric problems throughout this movie. It doesn't know what it wants to say, and uh, not just as a message from the movie, but I'm talking about as uh, from the main character's arc. Um, he's he's tired of killing at the beginning, but then at the very end he's done killing. But it's not like a a a full on arc or anything like that. I'm I'm not really spoiling the movie whether he lives or not, but I'm just saying as uh, from the full on way that they're trying to explain this film, it just does not work. Let me see what else we have. Um. He's also scared of drowning, which is a big theme through about two or three scenes through the beginning, and then never addressed again. Honestly, it's just a stupid-ass idea, and uh, I can't believe that it's executed in 2019. They couldn't come up with something better. I, I'm starting to realize that Will Smith just does not have a good sense of uh, sci-fi features that he should you know, star in. I mean, if you think about the ones he's been in most recently... Um, uh, I mean, let me, I probably actually have a list right here on, uh, let me see, let me see, Gemini Man, Skirt, Will Smith, and, so yeah, the last few, oh wait, why is it showing soundtrack? Here we go. The last few movies he's been in, I mean, have not been exceptionally well reviewed. Um, Aladdin is not so much a sci-fi feature but i mean that one's making money around the world uh bright that, that was on netflix suicide uh, collateral beauty Ooh, that was one of the worst movies of that year suicide squad and it's not that's not a sci-fi but uh let me see what the other sci-fi uh, okay after earth 2013 with his son that was really not that uh that not that good a lot of people say that Jaden Smith was having trouble doing some of the acting in that and, you know, carrying that movie. So that's probably why he wasn't in this movie, honestly, um, from what I can hear. Because, I, I mean, he looks a lot like his father, in my opinion. Um, Men in Black 3 was another sci-fi uh, movie he did not get very well reviewed on. Um, I Am Legend. Th I think this makes I Am Legend look like <laughs> a masterpiece, almost. Um, and, and I know it's not, um, but it just seems a lot more competently made. And uh, in addition to uh, iRobot, um, iRobot, I, I enjoyed iRobot when I was younger, but I probably would go back and you know have a few more things to say about it. Um, but I thought that one just had a lot more to say, you know, kind of behind the scenes of all the characters, honestly. And it's just kind of disappointing to see how this kind of was fell flat. And the, this felt like a movie that thought it was way smarter than it was. Like, I have no idea what they were thinking. And it seemed like, I just wish they would have consulted somebody, like maybe a, an AI engineer or something like that, that could actually speak to some of this stuff. And or it, it doesn't even have to be, sorry, I said AI, like artificial intelligence, but like, I don't know, cloning or something. Talk to talk to some people that might actually know some of the science in this. I don't know. So let's hop into spoilers real quick and talk about this stupid-ass movie. Okay, so um, I was exceptionally bewildered by the fact that we pretty much get no backstory with Junior. It's all told and not shown, which leads us to having only really one uh, real scene that resonates with us as the viewer with Junior. And I thought that one scene actually worked. It was between Will Smith, uh, Junior character, and uh, Clay Varis, Clive's Owen character. And I was just like, wow, um, you know, we're getting some true emotion from Will Smith again. And uh, granted, I will say a lot of people, um, I'd say about 50-50. Uh, some people said the effects look amazing and the majority of the movie, and then the other 50 or said they were distracting. So it really seems to be different across the board. Um, I watched it just in 24 frames, uh, non-3D, so I, was, I really got just the basic view. But I could see how some of that hyper-realized um, filmmaking might have been distracting. I did I did feel like some of the places they went looked 
slightly oversaturated or overlit, like you could just tell that, you know, they're on a set. So, um, let's see what else. Um, the third Will Smith at the very end is just a completely dumbass concept. I felt like there was ways they could have introduced this, but, uh, you know, having them go through this, you know, dramatic battle with uh, Clay Varys at the very end, and then all of a sudden uh, take out the youngest Will Smith or something like that. It's like, is there an army of them or something, you know? Um, you know, Varys says there's not, but we, I, I don't believe it. Um, it, it just leads, leads the door to have so many more questions in the way they leave the movie. It's like, wait a second, y'all are just trying to wrap this up like a TV show type ending. It's like, what, wait, what the fuck? Wait, there was a third, there was a third Will Smith. There's got to be way more to this company than that's what's going on. And you can't just make up with your boss after they just said that it's okay to terminate you. There's just so many questions that are just un, unanswered at the end and, uh, in a alongside that terrible effect of uh, young Will Smith outside. It just felt like some straight-up fresh print shit. It's just terrible. It got, it got cheesy. But honestly, I, I would have tr traded in about half this movie for some more cheesiness between young Will Smith and uh, the older Henry Brogan character. I was just like, what, you know, for some reason they just don't, know how to write Will Smith. I don't I don't really know what the problem is. Um it's like they write it way long before he's attached to the pro project. Um so it doesn't really fit anything he says. Nothing sounds like what he would ever say. Um the character of Henry Bogart is forced by parents at the beginning to swim or drown. Um and then kind of the same thing happens by his the work. Um, I believe Clay Varys or somebody does it to him or, you know, his boss or I don't remember exactly who, but he says that, you know, they basically resuscitate him after letting him drown and they say then then he's ready for work. It's like, what? This is the reason, you know, he's scared of drowning and there's absolutely no through line at the very end about it. It just is a, it's an odd and kind of dumb drop plot line along many others. Um, I, I did like the detail of the tattoos on the arm of the society that every uh, that Will Smith was part of. I don't recall seeing one on his arm. We might have. I just don't recall. Um, but I will say that it was a nice little subtle um, way to show who was within the society. Um, they come to the conclusion that you, when you clone a person, that you clone everything about them, their problems, their positives, their negatives, their skills, which that doesn't make any sense. Um, like, because they're, I, 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 it just doesn't make sense on, on any level. Like, uh, implying that like twins both enjoy all of the same things and dislike all of the same things. Like that doesn't make any of the same sense that they would even have the same problems or it, it really didn't make sense at all. The, the whole fact that older Will Smith was just trying to connect in a way that says, I know what you've been through because I am you. That doesn't, that I don't think that registers at all. Um, especially because I don't, I don't believe Henry Brogan was raised by the uh, by the society. I just uh, it, it's com it's completely apples to oranges. It doesn't make any sense why they would have the same uh, life. I guess um, there is a kind of an outdated strip search uh, scene in this with Winstead. I was when I was watching, I was like, "Eh, this definitely needs to be cut, and it's just unnecessary, um, making things awkward, and kind of as if they're gonna have some sort of relationship thing later, which they n never f flesh out ever again." I actually, the more I look at it, <clears throat> sorry, the more I think about it, um, they kind of did have a little bit more uh, stonewalling young Will Smith with having. Uh, Winstead 
kind of mouth at him a little bit more. So I feel like they were trying to have maybe that was the original one, but they I bet there might have been backlash to say, well, it would be weird if Winstead was kissing young Will Smith knowing, you know, behind the scenes is old Will Smith. I don't know. Maybe there might have... There's definitely rewrites that happened back and forth in this. Um, yeah, like uh, like I said, why would why would the twins... Why would Junior and Henry have the same likes and dislikes? That doesn't make any sense. Um, and Junior was never told he was a clone. Apparently he was told that, you know, his folks just didn't want him and he was given up. Uh... I felt like we were really not treated to a junior perspective of this movie. Like, I guess the budget was just so through the roof. I mean, we only get junior for maybe half the movie. So let's just say that. And from from that, we don't really get a really solid junior-centric um, couple scenes that that plant us in the shoes of understanding what it means to be a clone or even what's going on through his head. I feel like he's just such a naive, stubborn boy that, or, you know, young, young man that I just found it difficult to kind of relate to him. And the voice that Will Smith was kind of putting on alongside with it was kind of nasally. And we know that Will Smith never talked like that. (laughs) So that was a little bit distracting as well, but I don't know. I just lots of lots of questions uh, regarding this movie and how it was produced. I I I don't know. I, don't know. I, I really don't. Um, I thought that Will Smith might have been a producer on it, but it was like Jerry uh, Bruckheimer, um, David Ellison, Don Murphy. Um, you know, you know Jerry Bruckheimer from tons of things. Uh, movies like Armageddon, Pirates, um, Remember the Titans, and stuff like that. Among pretty much all of the CSI stuff, you know, and David Ellison's produced uh, World War Z and some Star Trek and Oh Annihilation. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, I. Who was the cinematographer again? Dion Beeb. Um, I'm I think I'm saying that wrong, but um apologies, Mr. Beeb. Uh he was the director of photography or cinematographer of uh Mary Poppins Returns and Oh the Snowman. He was on the Snowman. <laughs> so he's been on some shit movies. I have not seen the Snowman, but I've heard some horrendous reviews. I heard it was like unfinished. Um yeah, Edge of Tomorrow, okay. Gangsta Squad, uh, <laughs> Green Lantern, <laughs> Land of the Lost. <laughs> yeah, he's been on some booty meat. Memoirs of Geisha, okay. I've uh, I've heard that was good, but I've not seen it. So, Owen on Chicago, the musical. Who would have guessed? Anyways, so yes, that was Gemini Man. I kind of want to just do one or two. Excuse me. Let me see. Uh, Let's do reviews. Two out of ten stars. Elect H. Allen. Great lead, great character, great director brought down by the poor writing of Benioff. I knew people were going to blame Benioff. Uh, I was excited to see a preview of this based off of the trailers. It looked like such a promising premise, but, but that premise is wasted by poor writing and stilted dialogue. I... Didn't realize this was written by Benioff until after I saw the movie, but looking back on it, it makes mistakes. Uh, makes a lot of sense. This is exactly the kind of shocking, shock, shockingly, right, shockly writing and stupid characters any fan of GOT has come to expect after season eight. Okay, so yeah, this guy's not <laughs> not feeling uh, Benioff and what he's brought, but we don't know who's the last person to, you know, write on this movie, so we can't blame everything on Benioff. Uh, let's see. I I mean, it's easy to say that this Gemini man is just a gimmick. I I think that's easy to say that in just a showpiece. Um, let's see. Four out of ten stars. Expected to be a better film. Gavari 74480. The idea of clones is interesting 
is very interesting by itself, but not in the film. The storyline isn't that good and is very predictable. I did not like the CGI. It looks like someone else wearing a Will, S- Will Smith face. And not in a good way. Does not look real. Many action sequences look too digitalized, and you get out of the movie thinking, okay, is that it? Where's the story? What's the point? Seems like both of them are missing. Um, for um, reference, this has got a 5.7 on, out of 10 on IMDb, and I th- I want to say that it's got to be in the, uh, yeah, it's 25% on the first weekend of, uh, the end of the first weekend on Rotten Tomatoes, and it made $20 million this weekend. Holy shit, it made $20 million on $138 million. Oh, shit. You, what they say is you got to make a, at least three times your budget. So, holy bejeez, they better make their budget up in some Chinese money or something, or they better be they better be digitally making some money or something because they are fucked. I think it's Paramount that was um, behind this. Uh, Joker's been killing it at the box office. So, uh, let me do one more Gemini Man. Uh, review. Let me see if I can find someone that likes the movie. 7 out of 10. Okay. Flawed but fun action thriller, Mason Saul. For the record, I didn't see Gemini Man in high frame rate, which critics said made the movie look cheap, which may affect why I liked it so much. But Gemini Man is flawed but fun action thriller. It's surprisingly fun in place in, a, in places and has some genuinely great action sequences and is more thought-provoking than expected. Will Smith gives two great performances. The supporting performances by Clive Owen, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and Benedict Wong are really good. Ang Lee's direction is fantastic and beautifully filmed by music. The music by Lauren Balfs is is excellent. It's only brought down by a plot with subplots that are forgotten about in CG that dips in quality about the final 10 minutes despite being impressive up to that point. That's interesting. I'm. That's one of the more positive views from this. So I guess if you go in with really low expectations, you'll enjoy this movie. Thank you for listening to the Lucky Dog Podcast. Check out all the Lucky Dog Podcasts at Look at all podcasts on SoundCloud, on the uh, Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, on TuneIn. You can get TuneIn on your uh, Amazon Echo device. Just download them there and say play the latest Lucky Dog podcast, and it'll play it for you. Um, check the links out for all your donation tabs. Help keep the lights on by donating to paypal.me slash Podcast. We have... New podcasts coming down every week. I like to keep them coming down on Tuesdays, so that way you can have something, a little something to listen to during the week. So last week we covered El Camino, Mr. Robot, Joker, and The Fanatic. And we also have Zombieland Double Tap coming down the tube. So be sure to check all of those out. Thank you for listening to the Lucky Doll Podcast. We could not do this without you. Yes, you, the listener. And I see we have a high rate of uh, listeners coming in from Pakistan, from the UK, Germany, Ukraine, Canada, uh, Morocco, Austria, and Australia. Okay, thank you all for listening, and and of course the states, you know, the United States, the most listened to. So I just wanted to give a little international love as well. But of course, everyone in the States, thank you for listening to Look at Our Podcast as well. We couldn't do it without you. Go rate rate the podcast. Keep us high on iTunes. And you know what to do? You made a Take it easy. of another person. Then you sent me to kill him. You made a choice to do this to me. This thing that you are struggling with is fear. Embrace it and then overcome it. Of all the people in the world to come after me, why would he send you?